Yeah, it, it was one of the more interesting revelations that came out of the reporting. You know, when I first decided that I was going to really investigate what happened here, it was about a year after Seth had been killed, and so we're talking about the summer of 2017. And by that point, Fox News had 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 really, you know, blasted the story out to the masses, as I write in the book, the sort of act two of the book is, is Fox's part of the story. Sean Hannity, Lou Dobbs, all of these other conservative figures. Um, Roger Stone had already come along and um, you know, taken this, this this tragedy and tried to use it for his own gain. And so I, like you, thought, okay, maybe this is sort of more, you know, just uh, this happened in, in conservative media or, or far right online culture. But actually it didn't start there. It started on the opposite side, on the far left, as I discovered during the reporting. I mean, within, it's incredible, even even now thinking about it, but within, you know, hours of Seth's murder being announced to the world, uh, the DNC put out a statement saying that this had happened. You saw these theories start to surface online, on Twitter and on Reddit and other online forums. And it was not conservatives, it was not Trump supporters, it was not Roger Stone at that point, it was actually supporters of, pretty hardcore supporters of Bernie Sanders, who of course was the kind of underdog candidate in 2016 for the Democratic nomination. And it was supporters of the Green Party candidate, Jill Stein. There's a blast from the past for you. They were the first to say, huh, this guy worked for the DNC, you know, maybe he was a whistleblower. Maybe he he could expose or what had wanted to expose wrongdoing at the DNC. Because you remember, and this this is instructive, I think, is when people spin together a theory about something, they're often drawing on things that they already believe, feelings they already have, allegiances that pre-exist, whatever this thing that just happened. So in this case, Seth had been killed. And supporters of Bernie Sanders were already primed to believe that the DNC had screwed him over in 2016. And they did do a little bit of that. Not as much as some people said, but they did a little bit of that. And so immediately the mind jumps to, you know, there's this dot they know and this dot that they believe. And so they connect them. Maybe this young DNC staffer was going to expose that thing we that we think is true. Um... And so, yeah, it's, it starts on the on the left end of the political spectrum. And, you know, I, I, I hope people who read the book come away understanding that's not a, 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 a finger pointing at just Fox News or at just the Bernie Sanders people, anything like that. I mean, this kind of conspiratorial thinking, this jumping to conclusions um, is just a feature of extreme politics polarized politics, and that is not unique to one side or the other. That is a picture of the left and the right.